Vault Dwellers, Wastelanders, it is time for the Fallout Lorecast. Happy holidays, everybody. It's getting further into December, and all sorts of fun things are happening, like Cyberpunk's coming out really soon, and I know that has nothing to do with Fallout, but I'm super excited. Um, but we're back we're for a regular episode of the Fallout Lorecast. I'm your host, Tom, or Robots, and my confused-looking companion over here is Lainey, or Neos Pandora. Lainey, what's going on? How you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. Good, good. Like usual. <laughs> yeah, you having some technical uh, difficulties trying to figure some stuff yeah, out. Yeah, I'm just I'm very bright right now. I'm trying to figure out how to. Oh, you're not naturally it. um ghostly white. That's not your normal That's, color. You would think so by the number of streams I do at this hour that I am ghostly white in. Mm, mm. All right. Well, uh, welcome back. <laughs> welcome to also to everybody who is tuning in live on Twitch. <laughs> twitch.tv slash robots radio and this week we are digging into another settlement that you can find in the capital wastes of fallout 3 and we talked about this a little bit last time laney what are we digging into this week we are digging into 10 penny tower this week 10 penny tower not nine penny tower not 11 penny tower and definitely not 12 penny tower 10 penny tower because it is another settlement that is, um, uh, let's just say, doesn't uh, appreciate the ghouls very much. Oh, yeah. Kind of got a thing going on Not with that. Not at all. Not at all. So we're going to be digging in that, into that stuff. I also was planning to do some news at the end of the episode like we did last week, but turns out that there's not a ton of news because the news is actually that on the 10th, which is the day after most of you will be listening to this, they are be go going they are be going to... Is that, a, is that language? They are going to be having a big reveal about some stuff up and coming and we don't know what that is yet so we're kind of on the fence there but it's it's kind of a you know not a whole lot of news before the big reveal but you know, there's been like double points going on in fallout 76 and there'll be double xp and that stuff coming up so um definitely a good time to jump back in and do that stuff but um let's uh let's get ready to talk about our topic 10 penny tower <laughs> All right, Lainey. So what's the deal with Tenpenny Tower? Oh, which deal? There's so many. What's the what's the main deal? <laughs> who, who is the main it? deal? What is going on? Who is over there? What are they doing? Who's over there? What are they doing? Um, okay, so Tenpenny Tower, it's one of the settlements in Fallout 3. So in the Capital Wasteland in 20, 2277. You can stumble across Tenpenny Tower or you can come across it a couple other ways. Um, it's west of the DC ruins and it's near Robco's main production facility. So it's not really hidden. You're likely to see it. It's very tall. It's mm -hmm. actually um, one of the tallest buildings in game. And it's unique because it has its own music in the lobby, which most other areas oh, do not have. I didn't I didn't even realize that. I didn't even know that was yeah, a thing. It's really it's a really cool location. Um it's a uh, canonically built on the foundations of a plantation, um, and it's it's a cool building. Lots of people wonder if it's been inspired by other real life buildings, since so much of the Capital Wasteland is, and it's not. But it, they have confirmed that it's actually um, lightly inspired by Fiddler's Green, which is a skyscraper from the movie Land of the Dead. Oh, so it's another movie reference because there's we know there's a lot of movie yeah. references in Fallout. Um, yes. We, in fact, a very early episode I had Stuart on, who I do now. I've now been doing the Dungeons and Dragons Lorecast with, and he talked about all the movie influences. Um, but I hadn't heard of that one being a movie influence. That's that's interesting. Yeah, it's really neat, and you know, uh, it kind of plays into the whole ghoul underworld spooky vibe, right? Uh huh. Which is fun and definitely uh, makes sense <laughs> 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 yeah. if we look into to what all go is going on here. Um, before the war, it was a resort for wealthy people to stay at, and honestly, not too different from what it is now. After the war, we have good old, good old Alistair Tenpenny, uh, who was an Englishman. He's not even from America. Who knows how he got here? Probably on a boat or a plane. That would be my guess. But I mean, it's 2277. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing here? It's a little strange. Anyway, uh -huh. he's an Englishman. And he's an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. So he's a very, very fancy pants smart man. 
or at least he thinks so. <laughs> and he has, it's, you have him, you have his right man, Mr. Burke, uh, who you meet in Moriarty's saloon. We talked about him in the Megaton episode. Yeah. He's the and one who gives you the deal and says, listen, buddy, I got deal. some work for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they have a uh, protectron called shakes, which you can also meet in the tower. So um, back before the tower became a settlement, the three of them discovered it. Uh, and went inside which is it's not i mean it's one of the tallest standing yeah. buildings in the wasteland or at least this part of the wasteland i can you actually claim to have discovered it or maybe you're just the ones who were the first ones to brave going inside and claiming right. it as your own they, right they definitely claimed it you right. know if if nothing else um and they had they had a group of mercenaries with them and they went inside and found that it was full of feral ghouls which they very quickly cleaned out and discovered while they were in there that it still had uncontaminated water that they could use and drink from, hmm. which is a very rare find in the wasteland. So they were like, well, this is a good place. You know, it's a big, sturdy building. We cleared it out. You're going to turn it into a home. So they, you know, started setting it up, which is pretty cool. They, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, we're getting some cutouts. We're having internet issues. Laney, come back to me. Come back to me, Laney. Laney, are you there? Uh, she's stuck. Oh, she's moving again. Hey, are you back? Hello? Hi, back. I am back. I All didn't right. realize I was gone. Yeah, yeah, you kind of went, <laughs> and then we're stuck for a while. So um, go back. So we had a question about the water. Can we go back to the water? Oh, yeah, sure. So, um, so the water's clean? How is the water, the water clean? The water is clean. I'm not sure how the water is clean, but the water is clean. There's no radiation in it. That's part of the appeal of Tenpenny Tower is that you could be there and drink the water and exist right. kind of outside of the radiation. Yeah. And what's also odd is that the tower didn't wasn't demolished. It is like the only it's standing tower. Intact. So I yeah. wonder I have to wonder if it had some sort of. I don't know magical field around it like how does that work like it, it's like the land the tower is on is not irradiated somehow the water is not like are they pulling water out of the ground if they're pulling groundwater out and cleaning it then it's still going to be irradiated uh, they do, might have their own do they have their own system their own system of water that maybe they I had a know. radiation cleaning system I don't know that's a I mean that's a really good question right uh, it could yeah. be could be down to geology. Yeah, I don't know. This but is it's, it's partially. I mean, it was a place where very wealthy people would go. They definitely had a lot of money coming in. They mm -hmm. probably could have afforded to have their own water source, separate Some sort of, of water the system public or... water system. Yeah. Yeah, I still I still don't know where you would get the clean water because that's that's yeah, the whole premise know. of Fallout Three is like how do we get clean water, right? Um, Apparently, Tenpenny Tower has it. <laughs> I guess they have it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, they also have electricity, but not, it wasn't still there. It was siphoned from the DC Metro station, which does still, uh, work. It still has electricity. Mm -hmm. And so they turned it, you know, with the water and the electricity, they've turned it into basically a, a real place that, uh, comes off as pretty pre-war as far as you could get, mm -hmm. which is really neat. Yeah. Um, it's still, it's still kind of dirty and crappy and old looking, but it's definitely but, dirty and crappy and old looking water and electricity. That's a good start. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the, the decor is all fancy, you know, they, it was already a place where people would live and visit. So it's full of beds and all the things, all the kinds of furniture you would need for a, a living situation, mm -hmm. which is really nice. So it's very convenient that they found this and it worked as well as it did. Um, they started, you know, if you look at Tenpenny Tower, it has the giant fence around it, those giant walls, which is a, a theme with a lot of settlements. They have to keep it safe. Um, and so in order to keep the tower, like, really safe and sturdy, they actually not only uh, built the wall around it, but they barricaded the tower itself with steel. Mm -hmm. So this place is, this place is pretty solid structurally sound um, yeah very structurally sound mostly just to keep ghouls out so they definitely don't allow there's a, there's a couple ways you can get it tenpenny would let traders come in mm -hmm. and he would let people with lots of caps come in right if you were anyone else <laughs> you're not allowed <laughs> but he really doesn't like ghouls at all now these people do and yet there are ghouls with them that are 
assisting them, but of mm-hmm. course it's it's a it's a pretty bad system. They're essentially enslaved. Um which is awful. It's pretty bad, but they are very prejudiced against schools in Tenpenny Tower. Um what else? What else? What else? What yeah, else? that's that's one of the main themes of the storylines that come about in this in Tenpenny Tower is the whole yeah. uh, uh it's not really exploitation of ghouls, but it's the um I don't know, the uh, unfair uh what's the word I'm looking for? unfair treatment of ghouls the um you know when you treat somebody bad just because they're different than you mistreatment they treat them, it's it's inhumane the yeah. way that they treat them yeah they because they don't regard them as human you know not just the feral ones but the non-feral ones the ones that can interact with them right they don't like and part of that you know it's it's, it's really dark of course and sad and what's interesting is one of the ghouls that you encounter in Tenpenny Tower, I can't, I don't have his name written down, so I can't remember it. But he was a resident of Tenpenny Tower mm-hmm. back before the war. Yeah, and yeah. he was wealthy. He was the kind of person that Tenpenny would have wanted there. But now he's a ghoul, so he's stuck there and essentially enslaved. Right. I, I do recall that. That is, uh, it is one of the, I can't remember their name, but it is one of the characters that you meet. And you find, uh, you find out what kind of person Tenpenny is. This idea that yeah. like you you were included until now all of a sudden you're not one of us anymore and so you are not included anymore yeah absolutely yeah. yeah it's also one of the first places outside of say um uh megaton you meet um gob was that his name in the bar at megaton and i remember if follow through is your first fallout that's usually the first ghoul you meet and you kind of go okay this guy's this is a little bit weird this guy's a little bit you know like what's going on with him oh he seems to be a nice guy people seem mistrusting of him okay maybe ghouls are nice people but tenpenny tower is one of the first locations at least that i came across where i interacted with a ghoul society i didn't come across the underworld like we talked about last week until much later on so tenpenny tower especially because it stands out on the horizon you can see it It, it's a thing that you can travel to because you see it on the horizon Mm -hmm. um was a place where I I went and then when you meet the ghouls and you find out like oh these are people and not only are these people but they weren't always ghouls and you start to kind of unravel that situation of like these used to be more normal people that I would have interacted with more normal quote unquote you know uh, at least starting out human people that have now turned into ghouls potentially Mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's an interesting location to come across especially if it's the first time you've played a follow game yeah, it's it's cool. It's a good introduction to ghouls. It was my first follow game and you know, between Gob and then you slowly encounter more and more and not just the feral ones. That was really cool for me. I you know, I didn't know anything about them at all. Um mm-hmm. and you know, we all love a good story. <laughs> so Tempe Tower is neat. Um it has all of the basic fallout settlement uh areas in it it has shops it has a bar so it's got it's got a couple of shops it has the boutique le chic the cafe Bouman. boutique le chic <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> wait, <laughs> you, wait 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 you, hold on hold on you do it you do it and then i'll no. do it you do it again no hey, come on dude, come on dude. i just did it it's in there <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think you so, said Han Han. I'm not going to make fun of you. Well, that's how people write it. That's how you it. spell it, right? Right. No, it's so funny. <laughs> Twas a joke, Dad. <laughs> Twas a joke, Fadel. <laughs> Ma père. Uh, mon père. Um, <laughs> so, de from, okay, enough with the French stuff. All right, so. <laughs> Yours is impeccable. Well, it's Pepe Le Pew. That's the only reason I can do that accent. Um, Perfect. All right. <laughs> Sorry, where were we at? <laughs> Shops. Oh, okay. So we have we have the boutique Le Chic. We have Cafe oh. Beaumont. <laughs> we have Gustavo's Armory. And we have New Urban Appeal. So these are the shops that you can go to. Um, one of them, Boutique Le Chic, actually has the schematics for a dart gun. Ooh. If you're interested in that, you can buy it from... There's two people who work there. One of them has it, I think, before you blow up Megaton, mm-hmm. if you do. And one of them has it afterwards. So you can buy it twice. Wow. If you want to buy the schematics twice. Okay. Up to you. But they're Weird. available. It's an Weird. interesting little Weird. little thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so yeah, and then there's a bar, so that's called the Federalist Lounge, and the bartender is actually uh, good old Shakes the Protectron that was there good old in the sounding of the place. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have a clinic, so the the wellness center is the clinic there. So you get all the all the basic Fallout Settlement things. You got your shops, you got your bar, you got your clinic, you got your various living quarters. Um, you can steal. From the shops, of course, you know, they have a safe that you can steal from, you can steal some merchandise kind of laying around, you can pickpocket the people there, but if you steal too much, or even if you just steal enough at one time, they'll leave. They'll decide, they'll they'll express their concern about the security, and they huh. will leave, and you can no longer buy their goods. I don't think I ever ran into that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it's, it's interesting, for sure. Yeah. You know, Sometimes there's these tiny mechanics, these kind of um, very specific mechanics like that. Like, not every vendor will do that, but some vendors in a specific area will, you know. And so you don't know to try it out until you run across it or read about it somewhere. And you're like, oh, wait, I guess that's a thing. Or you just run across it in one place and then you assume everyone else will do the same thing, even if they won't. It's right. one, of the, one of the interesting details about these games is how they aren't yeah. necessarily consistent with little details like that. And I like, you know, you see the same thing with Megaton, just that you can lose access to something, something major, right? If you're, let's say you're living in Tenpenny Tower, and that's like your base, you keep going back to it, and then suddenly you can't buy anything anymore because you goofed and you you stole too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Megaton's gone. <laughs> You've lost both of those places. What do you do? Uh, you, know? you go to live with three dog. Mm. That's what you I do. Mean, I mean, he seems like a cool guy. <laughs> He's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you're exploring the tower, it has three levels you can really go on. The first being the lobby that has access to the shops and all of that stuff. Uh, the second being the third floor, which is where you'll find other people living. Mm -hmm. And then the last being the penthouse, which you gain access to if you do blow up Megaton. And on the penthouse floor, um, your back balcony is shared with uh, Alistair Tenpenny. And so sometimes you can still find him sitting out there with his rifle, yeah. just overlooking the wasteland, keeping tabs on things, just hanging looking out. for the next blemish to blow up, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so something you'll notice on your first uh, visit to Tenpenny Tower, no matter how you get there or where you are in other quest lines, is that there are non-feral ghouls that are attempting to get inside and are consequently denied, and they express to you and to each other that this is something that happens often. Mm -hmm. You have a couple options of what to do about them. Tenpenny despises them, despises them. He refers to them attempting to get into the tower as his ghoul problem, and right. will ask you to try and solve it um and there's a couple there's a couple ways you can resolve this issue mm -hmm. uh the first one is the side quest tenpenny tower where uh you can either start it with the residents of the tower or you could start it with the ghouls themselves if you go talk to their leader roy phillips where on either end they'll ask you to kind of resolve it and for the people in the tower that means killing the ghouls Right. And for the ghouls, that means coming to a peaceful negotiation where you can kind of let them in. Oh no, we lost Lainey again. Lainey's internet is the best thing that's ever happened in the world of technology. But she will be back in just a second. I yep. found I'm here. you're back. So um <laughs> so I want to like I want to expand upon some of the stuff that we talked about earlier in the fact oh, sure. that y this may be one of the first times you run into ghouls and actually have to interact with them. And yeah. because that's the case, I, I and I and I'm curious about this for our listeners, for those of you live right now and, and those listening listening at home. Um I'm curious about this. When you played Fallout 3, if you were new to Fallout altogether, how early did you come across Tenpenny Tower? And when you met him and he said, I have a ghoul problem I need you to take care of, was it your default expectation that it was feral ghouls? And that feral ghouls, because that's what you run into mostly in the wasteland, and, and you probably hadn't had too many conversations with non-feral ghouls by that point, your assumption would have been, oh, you've got a bunch of feral ghouls, I just need to go kill them all or something, and come back and I'll get some sort of reward, right? 
that was and this place seems like a cool place it seems like a safe place to be this guy's a human he seems trustworthy like that was my initial impression and i'm pretty sure it was designed that way with that being a potential thing what do you think laney i think that's true so obviously you will encounter the ghouls trying to get in in the beginning but if you don't have any experience with ghouls you don't really know what the deal is with them you don't right. know if they'll eventually turn feral anyway right that's you the don't other know thing how they work yeah yeah that's the other thing is once you meet them you realize they're not feral but you you don't have much experience with them so you don't mm-hmm. know you don't know if it's dangerous like if i was if i set this up and i allow ghouls and humans to live together is that even safe is that right like what are they going to do do um, do they radiate radiation on people if they're nearby like how does any of this stuff work um and so I feel like that's a wonderful that that level of ignorance matches many of the other people's ignorance in the wasteland because they never really give ghouls a chance. And so mm-hmm. it allows you to see things from their eyes. And of course, the more you play these games, the more you meet other ghouls and you learn the way things actually work, the more that can go away. And eventually people love ghouls. But that like that level of ignorance i find really really interesting because it really does match the way many humans in the wasteland actually interact with them and the things that they and right. their fears and the things they assume um so it's really kind of a cool thing even though it's you know not accurate and it's not fair to the ghouls it it is the way people think because it's the way we think until we are informed more so i, I think that's really cool yeah yeah I mean, it's just the nature of ignorance right the nature of ignorance and right. fear um it's the way humans are we're you know we're, we were we work this way biologically because it has kept us safe long enough to evolve to the point that we are now right but we live now we live in a world where that's no longer beneficial but then again if you were in a world like fallout where everything's out to get you and the world is a very dangerous place then wouldn't you, you be, be a careful. little more careful wouldn't you be like if you meet someone who's a ghoul and you've already had dozens of feral ghouls that t- try to attack you wouldn't you be a little uh, I don't know a little PTSD about it if you didn't really know any non-feral ghouls and realize that they're safe um, it's It'd definitely be it's a dilemma yeah yeah it's, it's a dilemma how do I know I can trust you how do I know you're not gonna try and eat my brains how do I know that those ones that were gonna eat my brains don't act like normal people when they're not hungry you know like all of these questions yeah 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 <laughs> all right so so continue on there's there's other ways to uh, solve the quest line, right? Right. So you can you can kill all the ghouls, and that will resolve it. Things that Tempani Tower go on as usual. You can also help the ghouls uh, negotiate to move in. In order to do this, you have to talk to uh, Alistair Tenpenny. He'll tell you to ask the residents what they think about it. You have to convince all the residents that it's a good idea, and eventually they will move in. Um, if you do this, Roy Phillips, the leader of this uh, non-feral ghoul gang is how it's referred to mm-hmm. in the game, mm-hmm. is he will uh, reward you with the ghoul mask, which I actually referenced last uh, last episode. Uh, and it's really cool. So lots of people don't end up coming across this because you have to go through all these steps to get here. Not just the Tempani Tower stuff, but also you know maybe the megaton stuff if that's what leads you here it's it's a lot so some people don't make it this far mm-hmm. um and don't even choose this path so they don't know that the ghoul mask is even a thing but it's super cool it's very helpful you put it on and feral, feral ghouls just ignore you they just think you're one of them they don't care anymore you can go yeah. anywhere you want <laughs> it's pretty awesome once i got it in the game i never took it off yeah, I remember this. I remember this because you were pretty young when you played through Fallout 3 yeah. the first time. And um, uh, creeping through the wasteland is probably the best way I would explain your your gameplay at that point. You were very, very careful. You were afraid of any anything and you tried to be as non-confrontational as possible. So when yep. you found that mask, I if I re- if I recall correctly, you finding that mask led to you playing the game a lot more. Yeah, because you were like, yeah. I'm not going to get attacked by these guys anymore. Awesome. And then you played way more than you did before that. Yeah, there were whole areas that I wouldn't go to because there were too many ghouls. Yeah. And, and so, I, was, I was very 
long. I was scared. <laughs> yeah. And so now you were at that point, you were just like, okay, well, I can just walk around and they're not. And, and for a while there, you were even cautious about it. I remember you were, you were like, yeah, I just don't want to get, sure I'm I still not going to get too close to them. To them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I won't get too yeah. close to them because maybe they'll realize I'm not a ghoul. No, they're dumb. They think you're a ghoul. It doesn't matter how close <laughs> yeah. you get. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's a great it's a great uh item. Especially for me. That was I mean, that was one of the first games I ever really played a lot of. Uh I had like Oblivion was before that, but this is the first one that was like sci-fi. Like role playing game, yeah. Yeah. That you really um, dove into. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That definitely uh affected the way that I play games now in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um So yeah, so it's really neat. So that's um you know, two ways that you could go across and figure this stuff out. You know, you got, you can save them. You cannot save them. Um, alternatively, you can just kill everyone in Tenpenny Tower. I know lots of people like to <laughs> play games like that and just destroy areas. And you're welcome to do that. Um, if you do do that, it will automatically put you at the point of the quest where you can go to Roy Phillips and tell them that they're free to move in so they can just take it over. Which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, If you do let them move in with the people there and you leave and you come back a little while later and you go inside, you'll find that there are no more people and that there are lots of ghouls. And you can ask them why there are no people and they'll tell you that they got in a disagreement and they had to kill them all. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so (laughs) I'm pretty sure I've played through all of these scenarios. Because it's one of those locations on other playthroughs I would make a point to go back to. Partly because of my curiosity about what happens with Megaton. Because of the tie to Megaton and the bomb. Uh, But also because of the multiple potential outcomes. And wanting to see what would happen in each. I think I found this whole dynamic very interesting. Like, can they get along peacefully? Um, And after the mid-break, I want to talk with you and then also our our uh, live viewers about the ways that they solved this problem initially. What was your first go to? Because many people will on multiple playthroughs will end up doing things that, you know, is against their gut instinct because they just kind of want to see what happens or they want to play a very different character. But usually your first playthroughs tends to be the thing that you're most likely to do if you were in this situation. So I want to talk more about that coming up. Anything else to wrap this up before we move on to other stuff? Yeah, I've actually there's two more little details here about about this in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you go and you kill people in the tower, or you kill Tenpenny because he's atrocious and you want him dead, uh, there's he, deserve, quest. he deserves to be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> there's another quest tied to him that that will launch you into. So, uh, there's a quest you can start in the underworld with this guy. He's a ghoul. His name's Mr. Crowley. And he basically used to work with Tenpenny and some of the mercenaries that they all, you know, they all worked together and wanted to find expensive loot. And so Tenpenny sent this group out to go find things. And the mercenaries wanted more of the share for themselves and locked Mr. Crowley in a room full of feral ghouls, assuming he would die, uh-huh. which he did not. And so now you have to go in and uh, kill them all. And there, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to solve that quest, too. It, lots right. of different outcomes. Um but if you go ahead and kill Tenpenny separate of it, it'll just launch you forward in that quest anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool. I'll just tell you to go tell him that he's dead. <laughs> Which is fun. Also, um, if you do that quest and you... Whether you lie and like convince everyone that you killed those mercenaries or if you actually kill them, Mad Dog will start talking about how those people are dead on the radio. Mm-hmm. Because the people that he asks you to kill are very influential people in other areas of the game, like Alistair Tenpenny, and it really affects how the game goes, which is cool. It's a, it's a really cool thing. I wish there was more of that in some of the more recent Bethesda yeah. games, actually. Yeah, it ties between like the the powers that be that aren't necessarily the main people, you know, like, not, not, uh, it would be the equivalent of like, oh, well, then you got to off Maxon and then you got to go take out father. And then like, it's not like that, but like these other influential characters who aren't, who may not be say the heads of organizations that really have a whole lot to do with the main storyline, but are known quantities, you know, mm-hmm. um, that, that is a really cool feature. I agree. Yeah. Um, and my last thing is about a little, a little bug in the game where, yeah. Uh, if you do, you know, if you have the the ghouls move in and they kill everyone, 
eventually, right? Like they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bug <laughs> where when you go, you have to go talk to the intercom. Actually, there's two bugs. I just remembered that other one. You have to go talk to the intercom in order to get through the gate every time you go through, right? And when you talk to it, there's a guard that talks back to you, and it's a human, and it continues to be a human <laughs> even after the humans are gone. This guard doesn't exist anymore, and he still talks <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other one that I actually I just remembered is if you... I think if you like explode the gate enough, it'll never close. And so you don't have to talk to it. You can just walk in. You just like blow it up. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure if you blow it up or if it just, I think it just glitches it out. It just glitches out. It thinks that it takes damage or something and then it just doesn't move anymore. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting. I don't know if that means that like enemies can also come through. And I don't know what that means for the ghouls either, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's a it's an interesting little bug. It makes it so that you don't have to talk to the intercom every single time you walk through. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. That, obviously, the glitches in these games are classic. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize the thing about the uh, the the gate. The yeah. guard. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there's videos for this um, that we can look up in the future. Well, cool stuff, Lainey. Thank you for putting all that together and presenting it. Um, We're going to talk a little bit more about this after the break, but we've got some other stuff to cover before that. So let's go ahead and move on with the middle of the show. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. So here we are in the middle of the show. And first, before we get to thanking our patrons, I want to let people know that after this show, if you're watching on the live stream uh, and As always, this is Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. If you're watching on the live stream, we will be having another Are You Smarter Than Twitch Chat trivia game. And this week's contestant is Fire Rider. And I will be asking in future weeks for people who would like to volunteer as a contestant. You have the chance to win up to 10 Stream Loots packs. So you need to be able to be on the stream live with us Monday nights. You need to be a current subscriber to the stream. And that can that can be an Amazon. On, uh, you know, uh, Prime. They have a new Prime Gaming, isn't that what they're calling it now? Uh, Prime Gaming sub is fine too. However, you want to subscribe to the to the stream, you have to be a subscriber. You have to be available. You have to be able to be on video and audio in order to play with us. And that will start as soon as we're done with this episode. And if you are a patron, that will automatically be tacked on to the end of the episode as your extended version of the episode. So. The only ways to check this out are either if you're a patron and you want to listen to it, if you want to catch it live and potentially win prizes, if you can beat the contestant by voting for answers that are going to fool them or by watching the videos that go up on YouTube later. So those are the main ways to, to check out the show. Um, so stay tuned for that stuff. So here we are. In the middle of the show, this is where we thank our patrons. Thank you so much to our patrons. We already have two new tier four patrons this month who will be joining us at the end of the month to join us on our chat. And it's always a great time. And it's always fun to have new people on there, especially to get their thoughts and opinions about the show and about the the lore and the stories of Fallout and their experiences. It's always a good time. So if you're interested in joining us, if you're interested in getting ad free episodes, if you're interested in listening to extended episodes, any of that stuff, check out patreon.com slash fallout lorecast for that stuff and become one of these awesome people who help support us and make us able to do what we're able to do. So thank you very, very much. Also, because we just wrapped up the previous month, this week we're going to be reading out some of our reviews to say thank you to those of you who took the time to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. So we've got a few here, and I'm going to get through them pretty quickly. We have Angus Jameson from Canada, who writes, Amazing show, five stars. This show is amazing, but I only have one question to ask. The cargo ship in Fallout 4, south, far south coast, which is a French raider with a French raider gang in it, that's the question. I, I, why is there a French Raider gang in it? Is maybe the question, but um, that's the way they wrote it. So I don't know. We'll have to look that up. If anybody in chat knows, please please let us know. Why is there a French Raider gang in the ship in Fallout 4 on the south, far south coast? I feel like I've read about this before, but I don't remember specifically the details off the top of my head. So thank you for the uh, five-star review, Angus. Very much appreciate it. Then we have Erisanthony. I think is how you pronounce it from the US who wrote thank you update they updated this review so we'll be rereading this one 
I've continued listening and decided to update my review. This podcast is great for anyone who's a fan of the Fallout series. Great lore and the discussions and everything we all love about these games. The only thing I could ask for is more. Thank you. And for new fans, enjoy. Well, thank you for the updated review. That's awesome. Very, very cool. And then we have Sam Zors from the United States who writes Sam B., as the title of the review. Thank you, Sam B. Um, five stars. If you're looking for Fallout lore, look no further. Robots does his research, Robots with Zeros, and has a great cadence that is easy and enjoyable to listen to. And I messed up the way I said that, which is ironic. Uh, truly has brought me back to the series. Love the show. Keep it up. Big ol' smiley face. Well, thank you very much, Sam Zors or Sam B. And then one more. Wow, man, that's pretty cool is the person's name from the United States who writes, I love your stuff. Five stars to just started your podcast and I love it. Please keep up the good work. Smiley face. Thank you very much. Wow, man, that's pretty cool. I think you are pretty cool. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for leaving these reviews. It really does help. It really does help our rankings. It helps people know about the show, know that it's a good show and know what they're going to be in for when they decide to put us in their ear holes. So thank you very, very much for all of that stuff. All right, let's move on with the rest of the show. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. So, let's talk a little bit more about Tenpenny Tower. I want to hear, Lainey, I want to hear about your first experience with the tower. Some of what your decisions were. How you, if you recall, how you decided to solve the situation there. And I'd also like to hear a little bit more about some of our, our chats answers to to these problems and we've got some notes in here uh things like um uh nv courier in chat says that they killed tenpenny and dropped him off the side of the tower <laughs> i think i may have done that on one playthrough also when i realized that you could actually jump off that that ledge like you that's part of the outside world you aren't like in a little instance encased place that just mm -hmm. looks out you actually could you know things fall off the side i think even the first time well, i right, killed him he he shoots from the tower to yeah blow, or no he it's just a detonator it's just I'm a lying. detonator but, but he does shoot things off the balcony sometimes right and I I think there was in one instance where and I, again I'm thinking back like a decade now but I think there was an instance where I shot him and the gun fell over the side of the tower and I couldn't pick up the gun because it like fell off I might be making that up but it might also be real I don't remember at this point but I feel like something fell off maybe it was the gun um, so what are your memories about playing through this section of the game well I um I definitely went there the first time because of the the Megaton debacle mm -hmm. and debacle. Um, I did not want to blow up Megaton so I don't think I did it on like the main game I was playing but I did the, the second time around and that's when I got to really explore the tower and and do all of that stuff I thought the penthouse was really cool um so yeah, I had a lot of fun there. And then in terms of the ghoul stuff, I really want everyone to get along all the time. And so I play games like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, it was really important to me that I could get them all to work out. Um, but for some reason, I don't think I did. I remember like I definitely tried and I like went and talked to the ghouls. And I think I went back to the tower and he told me to like talk to all the people in the tower. And I think... I don't know if there's charisma checks in there or yeah. if I just didn't try hard enough, but I don't think I did it. Right. And I think I just stopped there because I didn't want to kill them. Yeah. I think it was one of those things where like, if you didn't have enough charisma, if you weren't leveled enough to really achieve that or to know what to do to do it, like you, you mm -hmm. kind of came up against a wall. You weren't able to do it. Yeah. So that's, that's what I remember, but it's also, it's been a long time. Yeah. So uh, this is funny because Envy Courier and Fire Rider say um, that they didn't know that they were all going to die. I had the same exact experience my first time. I met the ghouls after being told to eliminate them. I realized that they were regular people who just happened to be turned into ghouls. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe there's a solution to allow these people to live here also and everyone can get along right because that seems like the good solution let's all be friends let's all get along and uh if i recall correctly i felt like i was setting up the situation in order to get them in the tower thinking that i could then make it to the tower before them 
and have the opportunity to talk to the people in the tower in order to get them to be okay with the idea that the ghouls were about to show up. I think that's probably the way I thought I could play it, but guess what? You can't do that by the time you and and it's like i'm like oh they're still here i just have to go back through here this area and go back into the tower it's fine i'll get there before they do no 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 somehow they teleport and they get in there and they slaughter everybody and it turns into mass chaos and then i felt really really bad but then i didn't feel so bad because they were a bunch of douchebags anyway and i just kind of moved on with my life um because it's a video game now had that happened in the real world i probably would have felt really really bad about that but yeah i i decided you know what i'm gonna side with the ghouls because screw these guys schools turn to have place to live <laughs> screw them <laughs> yeah yeah um somebody who was in chat said something like oh uh nekomata wrote i sided with the ghouls and killed all those fat faces and fancy fools yeah that, that, that was kind of <laughs> oh the that's kind of the thing like i at some point i just was like you know what they were all kind of jerks and you know, felt like they were better than everyone else. So, yeah, I'll, I'll side with the ghouls on that. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's that's the way I went about it. Um, do you have any other thoughts on this, Lainey? Um, Not, I mean, other thoughts. Um, I think it's kind of funny to give ghouls fresh water. Right, that's like because they the don't need things. it because they yeah. they can drink radiated water because the radiation doesn't affect them. Or at least it doesn't right. affect them the way it would humans. It affects humans, yeah. It's funny to provide them with a space that, like, part of the appeal is that humans can live there. And then well. not let humans <laughs> live there. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a really interesting point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I don't think that I would be okay with the ghouls then lording over the place and not letting humans in either. I think I think my right. assumption is like hopefully you guys learned your lesson and you're not going to be jerks to other people just because they're different than you and you're going to you know even if you killed the people who were there because they were jerks you're at least going to learn to be nicer to newer people who might show up on your doorstep I mean they're nice to you they are nice to you but so you I also assume. you all but you you did them a favor right you're the one yeah. who you're the one who set them up with the opportunity they'd been waiting for in order to take the place um so it makes sense that they'd be cool with you because you did you did them you did them a solid you know but i don't know i don't know that they would be like that to anyone else who showed up after that point point. and what's unfortunate is i don't think we have an example of that i don't think we'd know mm -mm. and even if there's a like a, a trader who came by or something that was like automated it's not like he went to live there you know they probably were fine with you know trading with him um interesting stuff yeah i don't know yeah yeah huh yeah nikomata says here um you will learn something about me i hate people who are prejudiced against ghouls yeah it's i i don't like anybody who's prejudiced against anybody but it also works backwards you know like i don't think ghouls should be yeah. prejudiced against humans in fact i think it would be really cool to have some sort of expansion i've talked about this before for fallout 76 that allows you to pick different kinds of characters to make and try to interact with the world as if you were a ghoul um i that know that would be, would be really awesome that would be a huge update because you'd have to have new dialogue for so many of the npcs who are now in the game to react to you differently because chances are they would um some of them wouldn't but some of them would so you'd have to rework some of that dialogue um you'd also have to have probably different perk cards if you think about it like ghouls would have different upgrades than humans and radiation by default would affect them differently so you'd have to build out a whole different kind of character class for this to work an intelligent death claw yeah or what about a super mutant a super mutant would be, be cool too or what if you what if you got to be an alien like the flatwoods monster that now we're just getting crazy all right well <gasps> i killed a flatwoods monster today yeah i heard i heard you you ran into some did you kill one today yeah i killed one today nice on stream it's my first one on stream yeah yeah cool so people can probably go back and, and look at your vod and and check you out as you do that um <laughs> yep. <laughs> unintelligent sea slug crystal king is has the best ideas ever if anybody ever needs an idea for a thing he's the guy to ask well Lainey, this was really cool thank you for taking us back to ten penny tower and uh reliving the wonderful times with a bunch of people who were ridiculously racist at least in the ways of the wasteland with each other um <laughs> a classist yep 
speciesist. I mean, they species? are classist. They're definitely classist. And yeah. Yeah. They got a lot going on. They got a lot going on. <laughs> Where do you think we might go next time? Next week. Any other Next thoughts week. on other uh, or chat? Where do you think would be a good place to go? I, I think we've been kind of on this trend with Fallout Three, so other locations in Fallout Three could work. Um, yeah, I've been like hopping from each one that makes sense. Yeah, the Republic of Dave, Rivet City. Yeah, Rivet City is definitely yeah. a good one. We definitely have to hit up Rivet City. That's one of the big ones. Maybe Rivet City will be next week. People will keep bringing it up. Yeah, I think I think that's after Megaton. That's probably the most well known city mm-hmm. in Fall Three. Uh, Rivet City would definitely be cool. Uh, the Kingdom of Tom. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> Irafu, Irafu. How do you pronounce that name? I forget. And the family. Yeah. Uh, Nuka Cola place, <laughs> a little mini episode. Yep, there's there's some cool ones that we can definitely hit. Um, well, cool guys. Well, thank you for joining us again for the Fallout Lorecast. Stay tuned if you are a patron or if you are on the live show for our game show, our Fallout trivia show called "Are You Smarter Than Twitch Chat?" with our guest Fire Rider this week. And Lainey, thank you for joining me. Feel free to f- jump off once we uh, wrap up the show. And everybody else, stay tuned. Stay tuned for our game show. Don't go anywhere because you could potentially win some loot crates that have prizes in them. So stay tuned for that stuff. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here. Stay safe in the wasteland. We'll see you next time. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. This podcast was brought to you in part by our patrons at patreon.com slash falloutlorecast, including our tier five patrons, Firewriter and Azen. Thank you so very much for your support. Listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.